the Red Room. It's so good to know that you're there today. We wish we could see you face to face. We miss seeing you, but we're glad we can still get together this way. We want to worship the Lord today. We want to hear from the Word of God. This is Epiphany Sunday, and we're glad to celebrate that with you too. So let's worship the Lord now as we get started. say for yourself today well it's another time another Sunday when we're going to be winging things oh uh, yeah 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 we had an escapee again this morning mm -hmm. but you caught me yeah <laughs> <laughs> our little rescue dog has learned to climb fences so we keep making them higher doesn't help and she keeps climbing higher yeah I think there's a song about that I think so. Oh, my goodness. But we're not singing that one we're today. We're not singing that one today. But we're here to ha uh, to offer you some music, some time together. Um, the brilliant little mind that sits in Mount Savage and puts our songs online and does things like that is in the hospital. And we hope she's coming home today. But um, so with the liturgy and things, we're just going to replace with music. We can't put it on the screen today. We can't get it up to you. And um, so we're going to do music, and we're going to have a, a sermon to discuss the light, because this is the season of light, Epiphany. Mm -hmm. And uh, although it's a little dreary out today, but we do not depend on that light. Nope. At all. We sure so don't. So we celebrate the light that has overcome the darkness. Mm-hmm. So we're excited to have you here, and we're going to sing a little bit. Yes. We've got two hymns for you that are pretty familiar, so you should be able to sing along. Well, at least the choruses. I, I don't know. <laughs> well, and if, <laughs> well, yeah. I don't know this, and I've messed up on the words so bad, you got to lead it today. <sighs> what uh, a way to start the new year. What a way to start the day, and I thought 2021 would be better. Yeah. Well, what if? 2020 was just the prep for 2021. Kind of like the prophecy, brace yourself, brace yourself, brace yourself. Brace yourself. Brace yourself. That's the prophecy, brace yourself. Yeah. I'm steaming up. Oh, my. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it doesn't matter what happens in 2021. We all want it to be better. We sure do. 
-hmm. But the fact of the matter is that God's already ahead of us. There's nothing that's going to happen that God's not ready for. Nothing catches him nope. by surprise. He never sleeps. And uh, while he's we, omniscient. He is. And while we look toward the future, he's already standing in the future. Praise right. be to God. He's eternal. He's eternal. The one who was, who and is, is, and, and is, is to come. come. Praise be to God. Amen. Shall we launch off into our first carol? Yes, I think that'd be a good idea. Noel, Noel, Noel. Yeah. You, Born uh, is the king of Israel. It's a beautiful song. And uh, all of you at least know the chorus, the refrain. But when we get to the third, second or third verse, it begins to talk about the wise men following the star. And that is what we're, one of the things we're going to discuss and celebrate today. Part of Epiphany. Uh, yeah, although yeah. we're going to really look at, at, at uh, our scriptures from Isaiah mm -hmm. that foretold all else. Yes. And I have posted the scriptures uh, in the announcement. So if you need to follow the scriptures, go find that announcement on the church page, and you can read along when we begin this, the sermon. Mm -hmm. All right, maestro.
you like me to do the pastoral prayer today? That would be wonderful. Would you like me to do it now? <laughs> that would be fine. Okay. That would be fine. I love that song, you know. What, the pastoral prayer song? No, the, the first Noel song. <laughs> yes, so, I love it too. And But, mm -hmm. there's nothing in the Bible that says there were only three oh, yeah, I know. wise men. Right. And we're going to talk about that for just a minute in our sermon. Oh, good. Yeah. So go That's ahead. great. Have a prayer. Yes, let's go before the Lord. There's so many needs. In prayer, so there many are. Needs. Yes. But there are also uh, celebrations. Yes. And we don't like to lift up too many names, but, but one of our people uh, went into the hospital, and he's coming home today too, we think. But the Lord gave him a song. Yeah, in the middle of everything. In the middle of everything, middle of everything he was going on. He, and and he, he, he's written a song, and now he's waiting on the Lord for music. He could have it, but now for all we know. But we're excited about that. He has wonderful talent. Yeah. So we look forward to sharing that with you later. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, one of the great things about understanding the spirit realm, we may not be able to be gathered in a building together, but it doesn't mean that we're apart. We haven't been able to get into the hospital to see people. When I went into the emergency room last Monday, she couldn't even go into the treatment room with me. But you know what we can do? We can pray for one another. I haven't been able to get in to see so many people, and even some who are at home, because there are so many restrictions and, and so many illnesses. People sometimes with compromised immune systems, but there's no separation in the kingdom of God. And we can pray for one another. And we have been doing that. We're faithful at that. Absolutely. And if we can't go, be assured we are sending angels. Yep. Yeah. And we've got, apparently, an unlimited number, praise be to God. Yep. Ministering yeah. angels. Yeah. So when you ask us to pray, uh, often God will say, send an angel. That's right. And that's what we do. And we're reminded in the scripture when Jesus was in the Garden of, of Gethsemane, and the scripture says that he sweat as though there were great drops of blood. And God, the Father, sent ministering angels to him. You can find nowhere that the angels have ceased to exist. They're still servants of God. And they still are used by God. And it's just a part of the reality. Sometimes we forget these things. It's more real. Oh, it's more real. Real, more real than we are. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Let's pray. Lord, I Lord thank you Jesus. so much for the church today. Jesus. I thank you for the kingdom. Praise your holy name. And we pray, Lord, when we pray so many times, thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Thank in this earth, O oh God, have your way. Minister to your people today, everywhere. Dear Jesus. Uh, there are no boundaries in the children of God, no boundaries in the kingdom, any boundaries that exist, man has made, but you have given us liberty to walk in the Spirit, a part of the kingdom of God, and so we stand together. Yes, dear Lord, there are maybe people in Florida listening right now, people in New England, uh, people around us in our community, we are one. We are united through the precious name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we pray for all today of the household of faith. Yes, dear Jesus. Lord, we recognize the attack that's taking place. But Lord, we trust you. You said in your word you'd never leave us and never forsake us. That you would be with us to the end of the age. And God, I trust your word. I pray in faith, believing as I pray, and as we dispatch angels, ministering angels, to minister to the people, that you simply do that. You've given us authority. You said in your word, these signs shall follow those that believe. We stand upon your word once again. So we pray for those who may be sick in body, for those who may be down in spirit, for those who may be separated from loved ones who are in the hospital right now, for all who are in need. We stand in the gap. 
because you've called us to do that. Lord, I pray for our communities all around us. Lord, that in the midst of all that is happening, that you would use us to be there for our neighbors, to check on our neighbors, to make sure everything is all right. Lead us. Put us in the places that you want us to be and the timing you want us to be there. There are no coincidences, Lord. You've taught us that there's only your direction in the life of your people. Lord, we pray for those who have worked so faithfully in the hospitals, for chaplains who have become sick themselves, for doctors and nurses who many times are putting their lives on the line. Lord, for places like urgent care businesses. And Lord, for our experience, for how you used the doctor that ministered to us last Monday night. I pray for them all. I pray for the first responders. Lord, we've been hearing the sirens go off so much more. I don't understand what all is happening, but Lord, be with those people that are on the ambulances. Be with those people that are on the fire trucks. Keep your hand upon them also. Lord, I ask you to be with our police. I ask you, Lord, to keep your hand upon them, especially in a time where there seems to be so many people against the police departments, against the sheriff's department, against the state police. Lord, we trust that you use these people. And Lord, they've been there for us. Be with our leaders today. Lord, from the presidency to the local mayors, from the Senate and the House of Representatives to the county commissioners, Lord, we need your guidance more than ever before. Lord, around the world, may we continue to be a light. Yes, dear Jesus. We're talking about light today. And Lord, without you, we don't have light. And we thank you for the power of light. Even our understanding in the flesh to understand that when light shines, darkness has to retreat. It's got no choice. Thank you, Lord for that power of the light, and even more importantly, for the light of your Son and the light of life that works within your believers. Lord, speak through Pastor Sandy today. Speak through the word as it's read. Speak through the message that you've given her. And Lord, may those words be words of life, words of hope, words of encouragement. Anoint your servant. Because the anointing breaks the yoke of bondage. Now, Lord, I give you praise. Praise I give you honor. This day, Lord, in Jesus' precious name, amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Praise be to God. Well, if you're abandoning ship. I'm abandoning ship. I guess that means I'm going to be preaching pretty soon. I'm going to be almost three and a half feet away from you. I know. Well, let's see if we can get everything here without dropping anything. Yeah. I'll be careful on the top if you'll be careful with the bottom. Fold up those legs. I'll fold up them things. I'll tell you what. That where you want it? Yeah. Okay. The things that we go through here to make this work. (laughs) Boy, if they could see what goes on in the background, we could probably have a comedy show. Oh, boy. Well, I tell you what, yeah, I, I, what, one of the things that would be great for for all of us that are doing this, uh, that are trying to do things in front of a camera, and camera is not necessarily our friend anyway, but uh, you know when you see people and they're just they're just smiling at you all the time, yeah, they got a monitor out there, see, uh, and even if I had a monitor out there, the letters would have to be this big for me to see it at this point. Yeah, the whole thing, the whole vision thing, not so good. So I try not to lose lose track of where I'm at with the bifocals and everything else. That's always a challenge. And so we keep trying different tables to see what will work. 
uh, to hold the, the scriptures up in the notes that we have so that we don't run too far amok. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, it's a good day to be inside. Good day to hear the word of God. Good day for you to be sitting down with a nice cup of coffee, maybe. Let's go to the word of God. Our scriptures today come from Isaiah 60, 1 through 6, John 1, 1 through 5, and, and 14, and Matthew uh, 2, 1 through 12. And we'll begin with the Isaiah scripture found in chapter 60. I'm reading from the New Century Version this morning. The prophet says, Jerusalem, get up and shine because your light has come. And the glory of the Lord shines on you. Darkness now covers the earth. Deep darkness covers her people. But the Lord shines on you. And people see his glory around you. Nations will come to your light. Kings will come to the brightness of your sunrise. Look around you. People are gathering and coming to you. Your sons are coming from far away and your daughters are coming with them. When you see them, you will shine with happiness. You will be excited and full of joy because the wealth of the nations across the seas will be given to you. The riches of the nations will come to you. Herds of camels will cover your land. Young camels from Midian and Ephah. People will come from Sheba bringing gold and incense, and they will sing praises to the Lord. Our scripture from John 1, 1 through 5, and then verse 14, very familiar to you. In the beginning there was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. All things were made by him, and nothing was made without him. In him there was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overpowered it. The word became a human and lived among us. And we saw his glory, the glory that belongs to the only Son of the Father, and he was full of grace and truth. And the word of God from Matthew 2, 1 through 12, as we celebrate this special Sunday, the wise men coming to visit Jesus. Jesus was born in the town of Bethlehem in Judea during the time when Herod was king. When Jesus was born, some wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They asked, where is the baby who was born to be the king of the Jews? We saw his star in the east and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was troubled, as were all the people in Jerusalem. Herod called a meeting of all the leading priests and teachers of the law and asked them where the Christ would be born. And they answered, in the town of Bethlehem in Judea. The prophet wrote about this in the scriptures from Micah 5 and 2, but you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah are not just an insignificant village in Judah. A ruler will come from you who will be like a shepherd for my people Israel. Then Herod had a secret meeting with the wise men and learned from them the exact time they first saw the star. He sent the wise men to Bethlehem saying, look carefully for the child. When you find him, come tell me so that I can worship him too. After the wise men heard the king, they left. The star that they had seen in the east went before them until it stopped above the place where the child was. When the wise men saw the star, they were filled with joy. Then they came to the house where the child was and saw him with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. And they opened their gifts and gave him treasures of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. But God warned the wise men in a dream not to go back to Herod. So they returned to their own country by a different way. This is the inerrant word of the living God. It is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. God is so good. Amen. 
as we said and said, Epiphany is a, a season of light. And today is Epiphany Sunday. And traditionally, this is the Sunday that we celebrate the arrival of the Magi who forsook their own providences, left their own kingdoms. They journeyed so long to worship at the feet of a child that there's no reason to believe they would ever see again. And don't make the mistake of seeing these travelers as some kind of palm readers or astrologers with, with crystal balls and incantations, in, in I can't say that today, incantations that are kind of weird or magical. These, these are scholars. These are men of great learning and rulers in their own right, governors over their own nations and realms, and they're highly educated in prophecy and astronomy. And it's appropriate to see the translation of Magi into wise men as our scripture from Matthew do, because they recognized in the light that they saw the shift in the heavenlies that indicated that something a far more import than the birth of just another heir to another royal throne had taken place. They saw what so many of those awaiting a Messiah somehow miss. In fact, while we're at it, don't make the mistake, as I said before, that assuming there were only three, or that like the pictures on our holiday cards, they were traveling over the dunes alone. The arrival of the Magi or the wise men, and quite possibly, quite possibly even wise women, for the nobility in these other realms were not limited to men. Uh, they would have arrived with a large contingency. There would have been a small army along to protect them from the bandits are carrying an enormous amount of wealth and they're wealthy people, as well as the people that they had along to take care of the stock and prepare the food and the animals that they needed to carry the food and the supplies needed for such an extended journey. In other words, even while they were still a long way from the town, people knew they were coming. They were a presence. There was no opportunity, you see, for them to slide into Jerusalem unnoticed. So a preliminary stop to pay homage to King Herod was unavoidable. In our scripture from Isaiah, there's a prophecy that we can see as a foreshadowing of these herds of camels arriving, carrying the riches that the Magi carry. But that action, that foreshadowing, has followed an admonishment from the prophet of Jerusalem. Oh, should wake up that it should be in a state of celebration. It says, Arise and shine. Your light has come. The glory of the Lord shines on you. And you see, when, you, when the light comes, when the light comes, everything else falls into place. And Isaiah declares this joyful announcement in the middle of a situation that describes the world as being consumed by a deep darkness that covers her people. So much darkness. And then, in the midst of that, there's that monumental, but God, moment. Amen. See, things look bad now. There's a deep darkness now, but God is shining a light on you, and it's a kind of light, the prophet says, that will open people's eyes to his glory. Things look bad now, but God is in control. Things look bad now, but God is making a way. Things look dark and dangerous and wearisome and endlessly helpless, but God. But God has provided a light to overcome it. Hallelujah. It's a kind of light that will draw nations to you, he says. It's going to be so bright, kings will come to you. 
and your children, those who have seemed to have been lost to you, they're going to come back to you as well, and you'll be so happy. You'll shine with this happiness, the scripture says. You'll be full of joy because of the singular light you have. And because of that light, he says, the wealth of the nations from across the seas will be given to you. People from Sheba will bring you gold and incense. And they'll sing praises to the Lord. Mm. Given the situation of a nation that's been in exile for so long, these words in the book of Isaiah are remarkable words of hope. The years of exile have been devastating for the people of God. They have lost their homeland, their temple, their leaders. They've suffered a painful doubt about God's will to protect them. To say that they are in an extended season of spiritual darkness would be an understatement. To say that things have been worse in 2020 than they were for these people, that would be a under that would be a mistake. A mistake. Psalm 137 reminds us about how they felt. It says there are no songs of joy to sing by the rivers of Babylon. Only funeral dirges. Lamenting the loss of everything. Everything that had once secured their future after years of denial that this could even happen to the chosen people of God, they had sunk into despair. They had crushed dreams and, and their hopes for a good future. They just weren't existent. And yet, during these very years of darkness, the steadfastness of Israel's faith found a way to go on. Oh, that we would have such a steadfastness of faith with no temple to be the center of worship. They began to meet in homes together, and, and the synagogue was born. They had lost their homeland. Jerusalem lay in ruins. So they recentered their identity in their origin stories. Much of the Old Testament was written during exile. They sing songs of lament, Songs full of questions and yet compose the book of Psalms that extols God's faithfulness. All as they wait for the promised Messiah. All as they wait for the darkness to be destroyed by the light. Our scripture from John declares that we have never been without that light. In the darkest times, in the middle of the deepest nights of the soul, from the beginning of all that is, there has been a light that shines in the darkness. And that light that could not be overcome by the darkness, the word says, became a human and lived among us. Jesus, our Lord, our King, our Savior, full of grace and truth, the life that is the true light of all people. All that Israel was looking for and hoping for was now manifest. This is the message from John. And it comes decades after our Magi had followed that star and fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah. John the Baptist has declared that prophecy complete. The light of the world has come on the scene. Isaiah speaks of the light. Then we read from John and he speaks of the light. And then we read Matthew and we see the Magi's journey was one that was called into being and led and culminated by the direction of light. Once again, epiphany is the season of light. And how do we stay immersed in that light in a world that seems so dark and depressing? 
the world is pouring over us is a message of darkness. A worldwide pandemic for us and, and yet for others around the globe. There are sharp political divisions. It's not just here. Reports of worldwide catastrophes of drought and fire and earthquakes and flooding and yes, even a plague of locusts. We're not even going to mention the murder bees. Yeah, killer bees. Killer bees, murder bees. And now they're Mur killer wasps. Killer wasps, yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm, I don't like things like that. Mm -hmm. They can send a, a plague of snakes and I'm okay. But Boy, no, not me. But no bugs. Mm -hmm, no snakes. <laughs> but we... We read the news, and you can't escape it, even if you try to. There are endless reports of terrorism, of wars all over the world. Our own country has fallen prey to domestic terrorism and violence on a scale that most of us didn't imagine possible. We didn't think we'd ever live to see what we have seen in this past year. And there are those who think it's going to get a lot worse before it gets better. The numbers of people that are spiraling into depression, the people that are committing suicide, the fear mongering, the lack of faith that we have in our leaders has caused the kind of despair that can be crippling. Even in the church, there are experiences of human loss that make us feel as if we have been abandoned even by God. Ah. But God. Mm. You see, no matter what cave you feel as though you're in, God can fill it with light. There may be struggles yet ahead, but there's never, never a time when you're out of reach mm. of the light. Isaiah offers a proclamation of hope and assurance and victory, even while the grim reality of exile permeated their memory. And he said, the light of God has dawned. Hallelujah. And John proclaims the creator of all that is. Oh, Jesus. The very light of the world has stepped into the sea. And Matthew reminds us that those who are willing to follow the light, and the light of the world for us is Jesus Christ. Those people who follow the light will encounter the King of Kings. And sometimes in their pursuit of that light, they may fulfill the prophecies of God. The world may be filled with darkness, but dear saints, the light of God is with us. Amen. And that light will flood your darkness. Praise the Lord. It'll pour peace into your situation. It may not take the struggle from you, but it'll give you a way to carry it with grace. We're stepping into a new year, but not a new time. For our God has never missed a moment. With God, there is no time or space, no new year, just new chances. The Word of God tells us that His mercies and His glories are new every day. Praise the Lord. And there is no place, you see, that the darkness can extinguish the light. And dear Precious saints, the best that we can be this year as children of the King is a reflection of that very light of the world that is our Lord and our Savior and our King. Let the Holy Spirit fill you. Let that Holy Spirit overflow you and use you you to be a beacon to others, to be a light for others, for dear saints in a world that is so very full of dark places. There is a true need 
for the one true light. Be a harbinger of that light over and over and over. Light, light, light. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah to the King. Isn't God good? All the time. All the time. God is good. And that's God's nature. Yes, it is. I'm For an anointed of, word. I'll let you have Thank this because I'm kind of trapped like a rat in here. Well, I'll tell you. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I tell you what. We come into this room, and I can tell you that Harry's hurt. So keep praying for him. He needs a lot of he needs a lot of prayer. He's getting a lot of prayer. Yeah. We, we need we need the answers. Just keep praying. Pray that we have we find the answers to everything that uh, we have more questions as it were right now than we have answers. And, and our doctor has a sense of humor. Oh, he does. Yeah. yeah. He he he'll look at me and he'll say, "Well, you know, Harry, for a man of your age." And after that, I just turn everything off. I, can, the I turn aid, my hearing aids off. The hearing off. aids just fail after that. That's they, it, yeah. They just fail. And yeah. I know he's done when he folds up his computer and leaves the room. Sometimes it's not just age. No. No. No, there's an attack going on, and we we recognize that. Yep. Actually, we, we've talked about it, and um, uh, you need to be aware, saints, you need to be reminded again and again that battle is in the heavenlies, not just flesh and blood, although we're fighting a little fleshly things going on. But, <laughs> yeah. but the battle, the true battle, is not against flesh and blood. And be aware of the spirit realm. Be aware of what the Holy Spirit is talking to you about and leading you to do. Implore the Lord to give you the discernment, the supernatural mm -hmm. discernment that doesn't depend on what the world has to offer. Because right now the world doesn't have much much good to give us, does it? And it doesn't depend on us. It does not depend. Praise be to God. <laughs> you know, it's the message that God gave you for today uh, about those who came to worship him they saw light mm -hmm. and followed it. Follow the light. Today. Because of that babe in the manger who came, lived, died, and rose again. Hallelujah. We have the Spirit of God that dwells within us now. The light, the light is within us now. The light of the world. And the Holy Spirit leads us now. Yes. Praise and we God. need that. I oh, need it. Boy, we all need My that. dependency is on God. But when we worship together, the anointing comes. And you need to know that as we're praying for you, as we're worshiping with you, God is in our midst. God is in your midst. There are no, no barriers, as, as Harry said earlier. There's no walls that keep the anointing in this little space. Ask for it if you don't believe it. Say, God, let that anointing flow over me. Lord, I open myself up to your Holy Spirit. Dear Jesus, stir me up. So much work for us to do. We are here in this new year for such a time as this. As this. Praise be to God. What do you have for us? He leadeth me. He leadeth me.
There's one that uh, we use many times in church, and we've done it a lot on our live streaming. Jesus, there's something mm. about that name. That now, there's a lot of people today in some countries where the name Jesus is used, but there's only one anointed one. Yes, one word of the There's only one. Honor. Who is the Son of the Living God? And we lift him up today. He's our light. of us and yes. all the weirdness in Sandyland. <laughs> Happy New Year! <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>